At any instant, the key of the transmitting telegraph is in one of two states. It's either on or off. The information that a telegraph message carries depends only on the on-off state of the transmitter as time passes. Two different levels identify the signal at any time, and this is what makes it digital. Now, of course, no one uses a telegraph in this day and age, but most of us use computers, smartphones, and a myriad of other digital or partly digital devices every day. In a binary digital system, there are only two possibilities, just like our telegraph system, on or off, or high or low, and they mean the same thing. So a high is a logic one, and a low is a logic zero, and that's why binary numbers consist of ones and zeros. Another convenient way to think of digital is a single pull switch that controls a light in your home. And if you don't know, a single pull switch is just a typical, simple run-of-the-mill wall switch that turns on a light, or maybe a group of lights, on and off from one location in the home. And for our purposes, we'll consider a high to be 5 volts and a low to be 0 volts. Nothing's perfect, so there is a margin for error. And when talking about whether something is high or low, what we're talking about, by the way, is referred to as a logic level of the input, output, or the signal. For Arduino, a valid high logic level is anything above 3 volts up to 5 if we're using the 5 volt power supply. A valid low is anything below 1.5 volts down to 0. Anything in between that is considered invalid. And if we try to input an, an invalid logic level to the Arduino, weird, unpredictable things can happen. Maybe the Arduino will freak out or something. So now we kind of know the difference between analog and digital and what they mean. But why is digital such a big deal? Why is everything digital these days if we live in an analog world? Well, I hinted at the answer earlier. Consider a CD player. Most of us would agree that CD quality sound is better than vinyl records or magnetic cassette tapes, but why? The high sound quality is possible because the music is not stored as a physical copy of the sound waves like a vinyl record, but as a coded series of numbers that represent amplitude steps in sound waves. In a vinyl record or cassette, distortion, or noise, is introduced both by the analog recording process and the playback process. Our CD player doesn't store copies of waveforms, rather a code that tells the player how to reproduce the sound every time it's played to a very high degree of accuracy. To make a digital copy of an analog signal, like sound, the sound waves are sampled at precise intervals. The voltage of the wave is measured at certain intervals, and each measurement is converted to a number. This makes a digital system, like a CD player, more immune to noise. When we make an analog copy of a sound or video, noise is inherently introduced into the recording. So I could copy an MP3 file a thousand times by copying the copies, without losing any of the original quality. But if I try to copy a cassette tape that way, the sound quality will degrade well before I reach a thousand. And that brings us to another important advantage of digital over analog. Digital information can be easily stored, transferred, and copied without distortion inherent in analog processes. Copies can be made from other copies without deterioration between copy generations. Now, guys, volumes exist on number representation in computers and digital systems, binary arithmetic and logic, and sampling theory. And these things are way beyond the scope of this lesson or even this course. But if you're good at math and curious, I do urge you to investigate more. Okay, so the main difference between analog and digital should be apparent by now. Here's a few real-world examples to drive the point home. Let's go back to our light switch example again. One way to compare the differences between digital and analog is to compare a single-pole light switch in your home to a dimmer switch. With the dimmer, I can vary the brightness of the light anywhere within a defined range of values. The dimmer switch is an analog device because of this. The light can be fully on, fully off, or it could take some level of brightness in between. With a single pull switch, the light is either fully on or fully off. There's nothing in between, just the states of on or off. The single pull switch is a digital device because of this. Here's another example. Suppose you and a friend are standing in front of a building near the entrance. The entrance has steps and a ramp next to the steps. So, for some weird reason, you and your friend start pitching quarters at the ramp and steps because you're bored with something and have a roll of quarters on hand. So on a ramp, a quarter can land anywhere along its length. However, with the steps, the coins can only land on a discrete or individual step. So in other words, a coin cannot land in between steps. The steps represent digital and the ramp analog, where the coin can land anywhere along the length of the ramp. 
So now that we have a grasp on what it means to be analog or digital, we're going to start using some handy functions that deal with both in the upcoming lessons. We'll then use those functions to control some simple hardware that will be attached to the Arduino. I'll see you there.